Welcome, Quantified Selfers, to Singularity, where we understand you because we are all trying to understand ourselves a little bit better, which implies a certain degree of navel-gazing. My name is Tom Bocher. My past is with Bell Labs. My present is with Human Labs, and I teach human alignment, Tai Chi, and meditation with the quantitative self-program at Singularity. My assistant is Chen Bones, and his past is calcium, and his present is still calcium, and he's my trusty sidekick. Okay, so maybe we all navel-gaze a bit. Maybe navel-gazing is somewhat useful in the study of self, because that is just about where you find your center of mass. I thought it might be helpful for us to start at the center and consider a few stories blended together around the theme of water to illustrate the quantitative self. Let's start with something that most consider rather challenging, extreme butterfly swimming. What makes it so inconceivable? What is missing from the human equation that cripples most butterfly swimmers after 25 yards? I've devised a way through careful analysis and measurement to make long distance butterfly swimming something possible. Combining observation with sensing capability, I determined the optimal trajectory of the pelvis in butterfly, as well as how to sequence the neuromuscular time. I had to take the stroke apart and reconstruct it according to animal models, as well as experimental data. I had to train optimally as well to the threshold of extreme fatigue rather than failure and without soft tissue damage. Now applying these data-driven rules, I've escaped from Alcatraz all butterfly, I've swum the five kilometer big shoulders race in Lake Michigan, 11 times, all fly, and done a two-miler in the Hudson. Each of these swims was a test case for something specific point of variability and potential for improvement. Now, it turns out that there is a burgeoning community of interest around the butterfly, perhaps because of its reputation for difficulty. My aim is to demystify the stroke and simultaneously apply these lessons to movement on land, the common denominator being the principles of human alignment. Now, martial arts such as Tai Chi are often described as swimming on land for their fluid grace yet explosive power. The most famous one is the original Chen family Tai Chi, which I teach. By quantifying the forces and vectors within the body from an engineering perspective, I was able to distill human alignment principles. We used the life shirt to measure Tai Chi's effectiveness on intercostal expansion and contraction, which contributes to a calculation of volumetric lung capacity. Remember that cobbling together these metrics is often a rough estimation, and we find at human labs that equations borrowed from signal processing, similar to the ones Bell Labs uses, are effective for discerning valuable data from noise. We are building an experimental chain that consists of a variety of genotypic and phenotypic indicators, psychographic input, nutritional observation, and other factors all combined with third-party data gathering agents, and a personal data space in order to discern correlative result. In order to properly manage the wide variety of third-party data collection agents, we found it helpful to create a landscape mapping. Remember that we are looking to make the process repeatable and expandable. You put this all together, and lo and behold, our navel gazing turns into a vast endeavor. No doubt you have experienced a similar challenge of data overload. What is good and what is bad. So we take a computational view of the situation. We are basically throwing bountiful processing cycles at the problem. Remember that computation resides most effectively within context. We use a personal data space to provide the context necessary to draw a correlation. A personal data space is a logical construct that exists independently of hardware or operating system constraints. But what are we looking for? We want risk mitigation and performance optimization. We want to train past fatigue, but stop before injury. And we want to optimize on race day. This works for an individual human in the water, or for that matter, the water in the human. We've talked about swimmers and martial artists, so now let's consider humans moving on land at super speeds. Race car drivers. Dehydration significantly impacts action-reaction time. Using EPM sensors, we are measuring the osmolality of repeated spit samples to determine hydration levels. 
Because we had precise, ongoing measurement capability, we could fine-tune hydration levels during the course of high-risk behaviors, namely driving a car 200 kilometers per hour in a variable environment. Our sensing program even picked up a previously unknown irregular heartbeat in one driver. Of course, you and I, walking down the street, may not care too precisely about the water inside us, but a team owner and a driver would prefer to have optimum action-reaction time rather than plow the car into the concrete wall in turn two. Perfect hydration levels improve action-reaction time. If we protect the car, we help win the race. So now let's retrace our steps. We went from navel gazing, to core analysis, to butterfly swimming, to Tai Chi swimming on land, to driving with the right amount of water inside us, all using the theme of water to tell a story of process and sensing for quantified value. Why do all this? What is the higher purpose of self-awareness? At Human Labs and Singularity, we choose to aim high, to positively affect a billion people. But every one of us in this room can start with self and choose to help just one other person. And this is what makes the quantified self worthwhile. Thank you.